So, welcome everybody. Greetings to you all and thank you for joining us once again. We are hanging out with, you know, the smartest, smarty smurfs are hanging out with us over here. And today's smart sister is Sherry Sweeney. And um, Sherry is, um, I will let her share her story. But before we dive in, I want to tell you why we're having today's show. We're having today's show because the world is changing and um, um, we think, or should I just speak for myself, I think that it's increasingly becoming important for us to challenge and to question um, the societal norms, um, religious norms, basically everything that we were taught, you know, whether they're belief systems, political system, governmental systems, all kinds of systems. I think it's becoming increasingly important for us to question these systems and to challenge the narrative and um, as well as you know starting to unlearn the things that we have been taught and consider taking on new concepts and maybe you know developing new systems and and um, new belief systems new structures you know doing the work for ourselves you know basically taking control of our lives collectively and i think one of the best person to share these ways and strategies that we could do this is Sherry. She has a very um, fascinating background and experience and um, she can walk us through, you know, the strategies that she has used to help people navigate life in general and look into different ways of doing things. So I want to welcome Sherry to the show. Hello, Sherry. Welcome. Hi, Faith. I'm I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. This is going to be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, you have a really, really um, interesting uh, background and experience. And what I think is is very interesting about or unique about your experience is what you did with the knowledge and how you used this knowledge and experience to transform and change people's lives and to also share this information and your findings with us so that we can all start to become a little bit more curious and question the narratives. So I think uh, we should start right from the beginning. Um, let's start with um, your own unique experience from your early childhood to date, um, just to give our listeners a little bit of the background. Um, okay, well, I'd like to preface it, if you don't mind, uh, that um, I have an engineering background. So that was the, that's the end of this. Uh, that's not the end of the story, but that's the result of the story. Mm. <laughs> so in uh, my childhood background is, is pretty ugly. So I'm going to just skim over that. I'm not going to go into details because that's a little too gory. <laughs> So what I want to say is that when I was a child between the ages of three and six, um, I was uh, I was tortured. Uh, I was a guinea pig for uh, um, my father, who was really enamored with Japanese torture methods. This was this was kind of at the end of World War Two. So it goes back a ways. And so I got to be a guinea pig for that. So what I learned from that, and, and of course, it went on, it started when I was about three, as far as I can remember, and then it's, it ended when I was six and a half. And then I was taken away from that and put in a, uh, a, a juvenile delinquent center because I, even though I didn't commit any crimes, there was no room at the orphanage, the Catholic orphanage. <clears throat> so I had to wait six months in the detention center and there I learned how, uh, pretty much how prisons for uh, teenagers work, which was actually pretty good, pretty good education, although it was not fun when I was there. I, went, I ended up two weeks in solitary confinement for a fight that I didn't cause. So, uh, but the girls, and I was the youngest one in the group because I was only six and a half, and that group started at age 12 to 18, but there was no place else to put me. So um, anyway, so I ended up in solitary confinement for two weeks. So I, I've got the I, I got the education of how solitary confinement is and how how it really makes you fearful. And uh, and so 
And then I went to the Catholic orphanage where they abused the girls really bad uh, back in those days. There were stories in the newspapers and stuff like that. So there were 500 girls at that school. And we learned religious dogma in a huge way, in a big, huge way. So we had to go to church every day. This is the Catholic orphanage. Had to go to church every day. And then we were told in school, for example, I'll just tell you a little story. It's kind of, it was one of my uh, awakenings where we were told in school by the nuns that, okay, girls, if you don't go to confession, you can't go to communion. But if you ever go to communion without going to confession, God's going to strike you dead. Okay, so that was this, that was that. And so I believed it. All the girls believed it. Because what did we know? Nothing. We only knew what we were being told. Absolutely. So then I, I was in, I was outside playing and I forgot to go to confession. And I re didn't realize it until it was pretty late. And I'm like, okay, so we got Sunday coming up and I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do. So I went to church on that Sunday and I remember sitting in the pew scared to death. I was so afraid of the nuns because I knew that if I didn't go to communion, they would know I hadn't gone to confession <laughs> and then I'd be in serious trouble. So I, I decided, okay, well, I'm going to, uh, um, I'm going to take my chances with God. If he wants to strike me dead, that's fine. I'd, I'd rather do that than face the nuns. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this was serious oh, stuff. I was age nine. Huh? At nine. <laughs> At nine years old. So I went. You took a chance. <laughs> I, you know, it's like that, that was a brave move, but, you know, I was. Very brave, yeah. I was so afraid of those nuns, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to chance it. So I decided to chance it with God. <laughs> So I went up to the communion and I took communion and then I put my head down and I waited for him to strike me dead. <laughs> I sincerely did. I know, I know. it sounds, sounds crazy right now, but no, at the it time, doesn't sound crazy, you know, because at the time I was, it was very serious. I I knew okay, so I'm like, okay, yeah. so I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. You know, he can come. <laughs> well, he didn't strike me dead. And then I thought, <laughs> okay, so. Uh, well, uh, maybe he's busy, right? <laughs> no, Sherry. <laughs> and he wasn't busy. He just didn't strike little girls dead that didn't go to confession and went to communion anyway. So I figured, okay, so the nuns lied to me. And I finally got, I was there, I was up there about 10 or 15 minutes. Everybody else had gone back to their pew. And the nuns, the nuns were so quiet i i think they're they're pretty suspicious uh superstitious bunch in mm -hmm. back in those days mm -hmm. and uh so i i was um and the the there were two really mean nuns in that crowd that everybody stayed away from or everybody you know always towed towed the line mm -hmm. so i i'm i'm you know, you're supposed to walk back to your pew like this and, you know, put your eyes down. So I had my eyes, my eyes down. And then I looked over at the nun. So I'm like, I know something you don't know. That was what I was thinking inside. <laughs> and I know something nobody else in this room knows, but I can't tell you because I would really get in serious trouble. Right. Yeah, you really would. <laughs> but it was, a, it was awakening for me. Okay. So if they lied to me about that, what else have they lied about? Exactly. So, yeah. So then I just started catching on with all the lies. That was yeah. number one. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to my dad's after, after uh, five years. And um, by then he had changed big time. I don't know what happened to him. Something happened to him, mm -hmm. but he had changed. And, uh, and so he was, um, he was not abusive anymore. In fact, he was he was a he was a good father. So that was weird, and um, that was really confusing to me because I was afraid to go back. And then I realized that okay, so I don't have to be afraid of him anymore. Mm -hmm. So I got rid of that fear, and that was that was teaching me how to get rid of fear. And 
I, you know, I didn't forgive him for all that he had done to me until much later, but I did end up forgiving him for that because I figured oh. my rational mind was saying, you know what, if he knew what he was doing, he wouldn't have done it. So something took over him, but I didn't understand what at the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand what had taken over me at the time either. Mm -hmm. So, so I did, I did all that stuff. And uh, so that was kind of, by the time I was, um, uh, by the time I was in my early twenties, I got married and, and had three children. That was a total mess because I was really messed up inside in my mind and in my heart and my, I, I just, you know, I've, I couldn't really relate with people mm -hmm. that much. Mm -hmm. Because of the, the different people I had been exposed to and raised by, nobody taught me, you know, things like be kind and, and, and cooperate and, you know, stuff like that, because they just didn't teach me that. So when I got married, I didn't know that stuff either. So obviously it only lasted for eight years. And so that was a big mess. And, and then um, one thing led to another and the children got taken away by their father. It was an ugly divorce. Mm. And so I'm not going to get into those details, but later, but that shocked me big time mm. because I had been, um, I'd been trying to learn because I knew I was lacking in learning, but I kept being stopped. I kept being stopped learning. It's like there was always something in my way. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I decided, well, okay, I'm going to learn anyway. Because I'm just, I was just stubborn about it. So I ended up in the library and, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about how back in those days there was libraries and we didn't have the internet. We didn't have cell phones. And we didn't have any of the modern science that we have today. No. Yeah, so communication. Our listeners are like, seriously, Faith? Yeah, seriously, no. <laughs> yeah, seriously. We no, we went to the library. We got out a book, <laughs> and um, we didn't have cell phones. They weren't even invented yet. We had regular uh, landline phones, and they were the big dial-up. You know, dial-up uh, how the, how you did your numbers, and it was the the key the uh, key key tone the punch tone. Mm -hmm. Came out much later, mm -hmm. but uh, and in fact, um, let's see. Yeah, it came out much later. So, uh, those of us who are who are in our older years, we remember the past. We remember the technology as it grew, as it evolved to what we see today. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Going to the library was a, a, one of the things that I really enjoyed doing. So uh, I was doing my research, trying to figure out, you know, what what is happening to me? I didn't understand what was happening to me. I thought there was something wrong with me first. And uh, so I decided to study the brain. Let's find out what the how the brain works. So I went and found out how the brain works. And it was really interesting stuff, but it didn't answer any of my questions. Mm -hmm. So then I went to the self-help books and I read a few of them and they were, they were okay, but they didn't really do much for me. And then there was, um, I was looking for another one and I was in the library and uh, you know how universe takes care of you when you really want something, when you really put your heart and soul into something, you always get the answer. So I was looking around, okay, so what do I want to read? I don't, you know, I don't know these authors and all this stuff. And this book fell on the floor and hit my foot. <laughs> yep. I'm so, laughing because I know exactly what that happened, happened to you too. Okay. So it happened to me, they've fallen off the shelf. I've gotten it as a gift. It's been left in a coffee shop and I'm told, take it. I mean, it just so many yeah. crazy things. Around. Yeah, so that happens to to a lot of people. That's the universe yeah. saying, "Here you go. Here's <laughs> here's what you need to read." Yeah. So I looked at it, and the the title of it was uh, by a guy named uh, Wayne Dyer, 
And the title of it was Your Erroneous Zones. I thought, oh, what an intriguing title. So I took it to the coffee shop in the bookstore and sat down and read some of it. And I'm like, okay, I want to buy this one. So I finished my coffee and I went and bought it and got it home. And I couldn't wait to open it up and read it. And there was one line in that book that set me on my path and changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't remember the exact words, but it's something like, uh, nobody can make you happy. Nobody can make you think something you know, you're in charge of your own mind. You have a choice. And I said, I have a choice. I mean, that sounds ridiculous. I know I have it. I didn't know then that I had a choice. I thought that I was supposed to do whatever I was told to do. And I didn't really have a choice. And if I was going to do something different, I had to do it in secret. That was how I, that's how I grew up. That's what I learned through all of the experiences. So I'm like, okay, so I have a choice. Okay, so if I have a choice, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. I didn't know. You know, what What do I do? I mean, I, I've tried just changing my mind and it didn't work. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I'm going to change my mind. And then the next thing I knew, I was back to my old ways again. It's like, okay, so how does that work? I really wanted to know. Well, by then I had already had a job with an engineering firm. And uh, um, I'd had, I'd been there for a couple of years already. So I walked into work one day and the, the boss comes and he says, Hey, Sherry, we just got a new contract and they need a computer programmer. Well, how would, how would you think about learning computing programming? And I said, Oh, that sounds really interesting. Sure. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to school to learn. And why they didn't just hire a computer programmer is beyond me, but they were willing to spend the money to train me <laughs> to do, to write programs. This was before, uh, this was, we were writing in DOS. This was before Windows. Yeah, MS-DOS. <laughs> okay, so if anybody can believe that, that's, this, is bef this is before Windows even came out. <laughs> so we were writing code in DOS, actually in, in, um, in, uh, I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, anyway, so, because that was such a long time ago, I don't remember the name of it, but whatever the program was in the code was, I was writing, learning how to write programs in there. So in the class, I, I realized, you know what, our brains are kind of like computers. You write a program, it runs on that program. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do something different, you have to change the program. Oh, so a light bulb went off to me and it's like, oh, okay, so I have to change the program in my mind to change my belief system and my reactions and my, you know, all that stuff. And then, and then life will be good, right? That was my theory. And so I thought, well, now I wonder, I wonder if I could change the programming in my mind. I'm not sure how to do that because it's so complicated. Because when I was being attacked by what I call the entities there, uh, we haven't talked about this, but I'll just throw it in right now. Yeah, go ahead. They, um, the entities are, they're like non-human, intelligent conscious beings and anybody who thinks I'm crazy, that's okay. I mean, cause I, I know that they're real and a lot of other people know that they're real. And so there's books written on it and there's, uh, there's measurements to measure them and there's all kinds of stuff to, to show that they are, they're actually real and what these, what these entities do. Some call them demons, some call them gin, some call them, um, uh, the flyers, um, there's a whole bunch of different, some call them Wutiko. I'm trying to come up with names that people might have heard before. Some yeah, call them Archons. Archons. And I think it's good, Sherry, that you mention all these things because before people call you crazy, the relief, the Christian faith, they have huge revivals where they, they're casting out demons. So sure, sure, sure. The Muslims yeah. have their jinn ceremonies where they're casting out jinns and doing every relief. The Hindus have their 
ritual. So, you know, she just called them entities, but everybody knows this is happening. Otherwise, the, the stadiums would not be filled with people. You know, you should look at the, the, the turnout, you know, for the revivals or the Muslim or the Hindu, you know, uh, ceremonies. So yeah. you are nowhere close to crazy. It's just okay. Well, so okay, yeah. so that's fine. I'm, I'm I'm happy that you clarified that yeah. because um, I called them entities because I yeah. didn't know what else to call them, and I still call them entities. But I know when people are are saying demons or or uh, jinn or whatever whatever the term is, depending on the culture and the religion. Mm -hmm. I know that they're talking about these same entities and there's an argument, you know, like a Muslim might say, well, but the jinn are more powerful. My God's more powerful than yours. I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah. Nevertheless, they're damaging you. Okay. I don't care how powerful they are. The only power that they ever get is what you give to them. There'll be arguments about that. They'll say, oh, no, 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 no. They'll, they can, they can do all kinds of things. And that's, that's their choice to believe that. I don't, I don't really care what they believe, but what I'm saying is these entities um, were messing with my mind. Mm -hmm. I knew they weren't me. I knew the thoughts in my mind were not mine because I didn't think that way. You know, I mean, I, I knew the difference between how I thought and felt and what was coming into my mind. It's a whole different ballgame. So I needed to figure out a way to change that, and I didn't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, the computer programming part helped a lot, but it, the, the brain is so complicated. When you're being attacked, you need something that's quick, just real quick mm -hmm. uh, and, and immediate. And so first of all, you have to you have to be able to think about, I need to do something here to stop this, to change it, and it depends on how severe it is. It might just be, they, they attack everybody, every single person on the planet, whether you know it or not. And you don't have to be crazy and you don't have to be schizophrenic and you don't have to be mentally ill, <laughs> excuse me, to, to, have, to have them attack you. They will just attack you on, a, you know, like as a matter of course to see if they can hook you and if they can't, they'll go away. And then maybe later on in a few years, they might come back and try it again. A lot of people do get hooked because they don't understand. They think that those are their, their thoughts, their discernment, their idea, uh, whatever. And it's not. If it's, if it's a negative thought, uh, you can pretty much count on that it's it's an entity or a, a group of entities trying to sway you into doing something that will damage you in the long run that's their idea they wanted they wanted what their goal is is to get us into a negative thought pattern because we are energetic beings and the negativity exudes out of us and that's their food they siphon that off that's their sustainment that's how that's their systems. And I don't know if that's the first time anybody in your group is hearing this or not, but but you can look it up. You can it is your... possibly the first time people are hearing this because of the language. You know, you know what, Sherry? People are programmed that there is this word, you know, so this, you know, like it's the jinn, then they get it if they're Muslim. They're like, oh, I know the jinns, they do this. Or it's the demons, the devil, it's Satan. Oh, I know this is what it means. So you're saying entities, but if you had said the devil or the demons, you know, they said the devil is a lie, you know, it comes to lie, cheat and steal. <laughs> so, so they know <laughs> that, well, you know, I don't want to fight my husband. I don't want to fight my children. They know some, but some, some spirit, some external force is interfering and causing strife in my home. But they say, you know, cast out the devil, you know, or cast out the jinn and the, and the Hindus, the Buddhists. Everyone has a name for it, mm -hmm. you know. So I think they can follow you. You know what I mean? Um, but I think what you have really said, which might make people really um, think twice, is that 
it's happening to everybody because some people think no you know my life is fine all my thoughts are mine i'm in full control i have perfect discernment you know i never I get angry i never get upset I'm okay. Exactly. I'm okay with everything i never get i never get anxious i never get nervous i never get you know i'm always secure and feeling safe and all this stuff yeah right 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 okay Keep lying to yourself, my friends, because that's not true. The thing is, I was trying to figure out how to combat these things, how to get rid of them, because they were very severe in my head. They were telling me things that I would never do. I would never think. And uh, but they, were, they were ugly, terrible thoughts. So I knew that those weren't my thoughts. And... Um, I finally figured out, okay, so everything they're telling me is a lie. Everything. There's not one single truth that they told me ever since I can remember. So I started, I developed the That's a Lie program. Oh, yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a mental program. Mm. And I have, I, have a, I have an article up on, the, on my blog about it. It's free. It's free for everybody. I'll put it in the description. There's a link in the description. So I want to remind you all, please go into the description section of this video because you will find all Sherry's information and links to the website, articles, and everything. It, you will really get a lot of interest in um, resources there. So yeah, thank you for that. That thank, yeah. that'll help. That'll be helpful to to anybody. Yes. All you have to do is know how to read English, and if you don't i'm sure google has a way to translate it into your own language <laughs> oh, yeah. nowadays you can just translate a whole website so once okay. you're on the website you just click translate and from chinese every web, every website is translated okay well, well that's good to know I, i've been doing individual articles and pages that come from a different language that i don't read and i can uh, um, do a right click and then translate and it'll yeah. translate that page. I didn't know you could do a whole website. Oh yeah, you could do a whole whole a whole website. Yeah. Oh yeah. good, that's good yeah. to know. So you know, and I know that's important for a lot of Europeans over here because you know you have German, you have Scandinavian, yes, yes, you have Italian. So you know, just translate. Literally, go to the website, click translate. There's a button, translate language, and the whole site is translated. Okay, well that's I appreciate that. Yeah, good deal. Yeah, yeah. because that'll be helpful to a lot of people and. I'm not charging anything for this service. Uh, I just uh, I just want people to look into it and decide for themselves. I'm not telling you what to think. <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do. Just, you know, if you could take whatever uh, ideas and thoughts and beliefs that you have at the moment, take them out and put them in a box and just let them sit over here while you're listening to this. You can go back and get them later if you want. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. Nobody cares. I don't care. This is up to you. And so I'm just trying to wake people up to that aspect of life because it's affecting everybody. It's affecting the whole world. It's affecting our leaders. I mean, it's especially affecting our leaders and our media and all those, all those things, <coughs> excuse me, that are <coughs> always lying to us. And then there's the, the pieces of the, the, the piece, <laughs> the groups of people who are eating that up, hook, line, and sinker, thinking every word is true. Well, I don't think everybody on the planet thinks that. I think a lot of people see through the lies. And I think that's why they're not going to be successful in the end. So I think that um, it, 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 but if we can get, get a hold of this entity, that's plaguing us, we can easily unlearn the things that we've learned already because we've been learning a pack of lies. So, you know, but you're not going to be able to unlearn anything as long as you've got these, these entities flying around in your head, uh, you know, attacking you and saying, no, you don't want to do that. That's, that's bullshit. That's crazy talk. That's, you know, nobody wants to hear that. And whatever they have to say to, to you, to make you stop don't look don't look there's nothing to see here it's I'm like, okay so they will do that to you and you'll say 
uh, you know, I, I, I've got other things to do. This isn't worth my time or whatever it is like that. I'm busy. You know, I can't take the time. You know, you got a million excuses of why you're not going to look into this. And that's yeah, sure we're talking about that. The excuses are not based on any facts. There's no foundation for those excuses because you've not, you know, you've not listened to the information so you can judge it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't tell, you cannot validate and you can't prove it was a waste of time. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. So imagine if everybody knew about these entities and called them yeah. a lie and kept it up until they went away, no matter how severe or how, or how mellow they, not a mellow attack, but <laughs> how benign the attack may seem. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, it, imagine if everybody did that, and that meant that means that okay, so now you see the lies coming from our leaders, you see the lies coming from our media, you see the lies coming from our science, our medical, our everything. Once you see those lies, you're not going to agree with it. Once we don't agree with it, their whole game falls apart. So that's the big picture I'm looking at. If I if we want to if we want to have heaven on earth, so to speak, eventually, we would need to do something this radical. And think about, you know, the thing is, people <laughs> people are so spoiled. They think, okay, well, okay, so we did that, and then it nothing happened. <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> this is going to take a while, folks. You know, this is really going to take a while. Nothing happens overnight. Uh, nature doesn't happen overnight. We don't happen overnight. We don't get cured overnight. Nothing happens overnight or instantly. It it happens instantly on your computer, but that's the only place that it happens instantly. <laughs> so. It is so true. In real life, nothing happens instantly. No, no. In real life, it never nothing. happens. Nothing, nothing at all happens instantly. Nothing at it, all. Not even a meal that you cook. Nothing. Get over it. Instantly. Even an instant meeting, meal, it's still going to happen in a few minutes, but it's not going to happen. Boom. No. So we're not in Star Trek at the, one of those replicator thingies that you push the button and then, the, you know, a moment later, there it is. That's all there is to it. We might be someday if, if we're not all killed off. Because in my view, from what all the studies that I've done and all the things that I've learned, the way I see it is these guys, the big guys, are, they're trying to kill us off. I don't even think they're human. The ones underneath them might be human, but they're they're uh, um, influenced heavily by these entities, by by the their leaders, and who are who are may or may not be human. I don't really know, but they're not acting human. They're not doing human things. So, um, to me, to my mind, they're not human. They're they've got uh, uh, an entity in them that is kind of similar to. Um, uh, um, the Stargate uh, um, TV series where they had the Goa'uld that crawled inside the person and changed them and took over their body and made them mean and nasty and all this stuff. Did you ever see that? No? Mm, Star Wars. Yeah, I think I got them mixed up. Star Wars, Stargate. <laughs> yeah, Star Stargate. Yeah, Star, Star Wars is a movie. Star Trek is a... Is a uh, a TV series and Stargate is another TV series. Okay. Yeah. So in Star Trek, they all have aspects of that. You know? Yeah, they do. But in Star yeah. Trek, they're traveling on a spaceship. In Stargate, they're walking through a Stargate to go to. Which one was the one where they had the Borg that was taken? That was over. Star Trek. Yeah, that's the one I have watched where they had the Borg and yeah. then I watched that as yeah. a kid. <laughs> so they got real creative in Stargate. Mm. Uh, I'm a big Trekkie fan, so you know, I mean, I love that kind of stuff. So, and and what I find out is there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things that are written in fiction, all kinds of fiction that are really uh, pr pretty prophetic. And when you look back on it, 
they're not prophetic at the moment you're watching it or you're reading it or whatever, but you look back on even some of the Jules Verne's uh, 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 books and movies and stuff like that were pretty prophetic. Who knew there was going to be submarines, right? Mm -hmm. Who knew there was a, there was a, you know, uh, an idea that maybe there's a, the center of the earth or there's a colony down there. We don't know that for sure, but mm -hmm. that's one of the ideas. And so that's what Jules Verne came out with. Uh, um, I think that's who it was. Anyway, so, but other other people in in uh, not too in the not too distant future or not too distant past came up with all kinds of different fiction stories that are turning out to be pretty true today. Like, uh, oh, let's see. Okay, so he here's one that I don't know. If, see, I don't know what kind of stuff people watch in in Europe. So. Um, the same stuff. I mean, it's it's the same stuff. Um, there is European TV, but the American stuff. I think it goes all over the world. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we used to have a show that we used to have a TV show that was called The Jetsons, and oh, they were. No, we didn't. No, no. Oh, you didn't have it there. Okay, that was a, a show where that was in the future. Took place in the future. Everybody got along. Everybody was happy. They they uh, they drove around in flying cars and stuff like that. They had push button. Um, you oh. know, they had they had like the microwave ovens before they were invented and stuff like that. So that oh, and really? yeah, so that's that's kind of the cartoon side of it. But then there's these actual stories like the Star Trek. Uh, uh, series and the Stargate series and a bunch of stuff like that that are turning out to be different episodes are kind of the same as what we're seeing today in different different aspects of life so I mean when I, sometimes when I'm writing about an about a, a, a thing and I'm saying, and I'm thinking, oh, wait, that reminds me of a Star Trek uh, series or a Stargate series. And, you know, I'm never sure which one it is. But so I'll go look it up and watch it again to see if I was right. And, you know, half the time I am right. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is what they were telling us way back then that this is going to happen. So I'll put that in the article I'm writing or the, the email I'm sending or whatever. Mm. And and I'll even put the link to the episode if somebody wants to watch it. So uh, just to confirm what I'm saying and how did I get to that conclusion. So I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised anymore. But I used to be surprised a lot at how much fictional work turns out to be happening today. Yeah. So. But anyway, we're, I'm sorry, I did, I did a sidetrack there. <laughs> no, 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 you were talking about the lies that we have, taught, we, we have, we have been taught and, and, and how you, you ended up developing um, the, the That's a Lie program. Yes. And um, to prove and to prove that these are some, li you know, the obvious lies, we can look at these different, so you talked about the fiction, you know, just real life, you know, so you were giving examples of where we can okay, well. lies and... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. So uh, if if somebody wants to to read the That's a Lie program, they can go ahead onto my blog. That's uh, There's a link to that on my website. It's uh, keyholejourney.com. Yeah. So they can go there. And then um, uh, I think um, there's a there's a topics <coughs> uh, tab, which will give you a page of lists of things that you want might want to look at they're they're kind of grouped together by by um, what they go together with because not everything goes together with some of the things just are go with everything but so that was kind of hard to group but um, they're in they're in groups so you'll just have to read down and click whatever one you want if you want the blog there's a blog tab and then you can enter the blog and you can type in that's a live program in the search bar on the blog. And, uh, and then you can, you can go ahead and, and or, or, or on the topics, <laughs> you can look at, um, I think it's the paranormal 
articles and under there there's a list of articles that are written by me and by Jerry Marzinski the co-author of our book that we published uh, about two years ago I guess and that was uh, by the way the title of that book is um, uh, an amazing journey into the psychotic mind dash uh, breaking the spell of the ivory tower because the ivory tower, which is the universities worldwide, mm. they are lying. They are lying to the students big time when it comes to medical psychology. And I don't know about uh, some of the other topics. They're probably lying to me about that too. But I do know about medical and uh, this, the psychology courses. They are lying to the students so that by the time the students graduate, they've got this idea of what works and it's not correct. Yeah. So they have, to go, know, they have to go and unlearn what they learned so they can learn the reality of how, how we work because we work in a, we're a whole system. Yeah. We've got the physical, the mental, the spiritual as a system and it all works together. But the, the, the ivory tower likes to, uh, separate things, you know, make them in categories. And so a person, a medical doctor, for example, they don't even teach nutrition classes. If they do, it's just for a day or two. That's it. And nutrition is one of the key things that keeps us going. So that's a lie. And then the psychology uh, group, and this is what I get from my co-author because I'm you know, I'm not, I haven't taken those courses, but they teach um, that the voices people hear, for example, the mentally ill people, those are, those are hallucinations. Just don't pay attention to them. They're hallucinations. They're nothing. And of course we, we all know that that's not true. That's another lie because they're not hallucinations. It's, you know, we've proven that in our book and um and jerry has proven that in his work and more people are more physicians are coming forward saying hey these are not hallucinations you know that's a that's a that's a lie that's a fabrication and what i know about um the universities and academia is the professors um they control everything. They even want to control the reading list. Oh, yeah. sure. And I found that to be so disturbing because why should you control what someone reads to write their own research paper? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't they do research and decide what supports their their thesis or what supports their articles? And, and I remember when we were in college, they would constantly, when you produced your own unique, very powerful and strong reading list, they would, they would, they would kind of try and guide you around, you know, the, the better, you know, reading list. And, and I just found that to be so, so wrong. Another thing I found, it, which I find a lot of academia dishonest, especially the professors, is they, the professors cannot admit that sometimes their students are smarter than them or their students have something to teach them, you know, and they, instead of looking at it like, oh my God, you know, I have this great student, you know, adding to, you know, I call it the book of knowledge, like, wow, you know, this is, I've inspired this student to tap in and bring this good stuff. No, they kind of shut down that, that, you know, you know, even embarrass the student. You know, I saw it so many times in class that, that, that challenge the student to try and make the student look stupid. And we are looking and we are like, this student is onto something, you know? And, and so, you know, it's like they feel new knowledge is challenging their intellect. You know, they have this, I don't know, that's an ego, you know, this is the reading list. Sometimes it's their own books, you know, you have to use their books that they wrote or their, you know, it's, I find academia to be so interesting in that respect, you know, and, and, you know, yeah, I, I don't respect it. You know, you know, you know how they say, don't, not, not, don't meet your heroes, but the more you're in that space, I lost respect for it because they challenged smart students. You know, they, they, they gave you reading lists and insisted you must write based on these three papers. And that was just like, 
why, you know? Yeah, that's so limiting. And that's not the idea of education. The idea of education is to expand the knowledge. And so yeah, to bring more and more and more and more, right? Exactly, exactly. So if we can expand the knowledge, and that's what you and I are trying to do here today, too, I think. We're expanding the knowledge of, okay, so I'm sure that there's at least one listener, maybe more, who have wondered, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, I'm being a bit facetious, but I know. I'm sure there's at least one listener who is thinking, okay, so what happened to the world? Why, how did we get this? How did we get here? How did we get to this particular place where everything is upside down and backwards and nothing makes any sense anymore and all that stuff? Well, that's by design. Now, there's a few reasons for that. And I don't claim to have all the answers because I don't know the whole story. None of us do. That's the one thing we need to always admit to ourselves. Hey, I don't know the whole story. You know, none of us do, but here's what I see. And based on what I'm seeing and what I'm reading or what, you know, what I've done for research or whatever, what I'm feeling, here's, here's what I think. That doesn't mean it's right, but here's what I think. So, there's a few reasons that, okay, number one, the big, the great big huge picture reason is our solar system is going through uh, what they call a Kali Yuga. And what, what that is for somebody who's not sure, here's, here's the, the galaxy. This is the side view of the galaxy, say. Here's our solar system and it's going like this. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, oscillating up and down, up and down over time. And for every time it comes up, it to, to get to this particular edge, which is not a thin edge, it's a big, huge edge, but just for the sake of <laughs> illustration. So here's the edge of the of the galaxy. And here's our here's our solar system. And it's coming out of, you know, whatever the Kali Yuga thing is. It's coming up like this. And then when it's in this particular, when it gets above this, in the middle of the galaxy is, you've probably seen pictures of it, it looks like a huge sun or it looks like a black hole or something big and big and big and shiny okay. and powerful. Mm -hmm. That frequency mm -hmm. hits us, the whole, the whole solar system, including the Earth. So that changes our perspective. perspective. It changes how we think. And the big guys, the bad guys, they know this. They know this really well. They don't want the people to know this because they've, they've been telling you in religion, oh, hey, astrology is demonic. Don't do that. Uh, magic is, is, is satanic. Don't do that. You know, don't think, of, don't think along those lines. That'll kill you. That'll hurt you. That's a lie because in the in the part of the Bible and the scriptures, at least, that, that did not reach the Bible, there's a lot of stuff in there that talks about that. And Greg Bradham is, is the one who brought that to my attention. Astrology, magic, um, our internal power, that kind of stuff, which if we have time, we'll get into. Yeah, we should, because everybody should read those missing books of the Bible. Now you can get most of them, you know, if you look into the Apocrypha. And you also mentioned the Narcomati text and the book of Enoch. If you just read that one alone, <laughs> you'll get your mind blown. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Uh, yeah, that'll break every paradigm you ever thought of. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, I'll stick with this text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're in a particularly uh, exciting time. It doesn't sound exciting from the point of view of all the damage and destruction and the lies that are going on, but we really are in an exciting time of becoming more aware and heading toward what the Kali Yuga calls a golden age. What the Bible says, a thousand years of peace. I don't know what the Muslim Bible says, but or the other or the Egypt, Egyptian Bible says, but they probably have a prophecy that talks about there'll be this huge catastrophe and all this war and damage and everything like that. And then 
God will come down or Jesus will come down or somebody will come down and save us. Well, that's a lie. Please talk about that because I think this um, there is a programming. And why do I say there's a programming about somebody saving somebody? Because I see this um, showing up, you know, it's always like, you know, this is, you know, this is the new Messiah, whether it comes in the form of a politician, a celebrity, a new community activist. There's always somebody who people want to look up to, to save, you know, and, yeah. and you could be somebody's savior, Sherry, you know, we're talking about that. What is this savior programming? And I think why sh should we, I think we should do away with it, but please. Well, we should unlearn it anyway. We should unlearn the whole idea of somebody's going to save us. Hmm because we are our own saviors. That's what we were given by the creator. Here's the thing. If the creator wanted us, wanted to save us, he would just, or she would just come and do it. But in fact, what parent wants to do that for their child? This is just an analogy. Mm -hmm. They want the child to like a good teacher. They want the child to shine. They want the child to learn how to take care of themselves solve problems, fix things. And our creator wants us to do the same thing. So if our creator swept down and saved the world and everybody's good, and nobody would have learned a thing. The only way that we learn something is by doing, getting into trouble, hurting ourselves, smashing our finger, whatever it takes, and then we learn how to do it. We learn how we were we learn what not to do, and then we learn how to do it. We ask for advice, and the creator will give us all kinds of help if we ask. Because look at all the things when you know when when somebody's doing research or somebody's trying to to figure something out, lo and behold, like magic, it just you know the the answer shows up. It's like holy smokes, where did that come from? It's always better than we could imagine, always. Yeah. It, uh, it's always a surprise, almost always a surprise of how it gets here. Mm -hmm. But it gets here. It's like, who would have thought? I mean, you know, but there it is. And that happened. I mean, I, I, I get surprised every single time. I should be expecting it by now, but I don't. <laughs> I don't. It's like, you know, it comes from some other, it comes from out of left field and all of a sudden it's here and Wow, you know, it just makes me be in awe over how this works, how the universe works. If we, if we are open to it, if we can unlearn all the crap that we've been learning, it's not our fault that we learned it. This is what has been jammed into us in every country on the planet. We have, you know, there's cultural beliefs and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's customs and stuff like that. That's fine. But but what if a person who's who's been taught a particular culture, they want to expand and do something else? Well, then nobody should stop them. And if it's a clan that really cares about the people in the clan, they'll cheer them on. It's like the old Native American Indians uh, when there was a, a warrior who was you know, wanting to go out and explore something in particular. The tribe who cared about that warrior so much would cheer him on. They'd give a party, they'd do all this stuff, they'd cheer him, they would, they would demonstrate their, you know, how, how they wanted to hold him up, how they wanted to help him out, give him some confidence. So... <clears throat> That's how our universe is is made up. in in my in my in my opinion, how what I've what I've experienced, that's the way that it's designed. Yeah, and and you know, in the word culture, there's cult. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, cult uh, cult is cult's not a bad word. No. Cult just means kept secret. It's not a bad word, but we make it out to be a bad word, because you know, oh, that's a cult. That's that's a cult. The occult means to keep it secret. A cult is like a secret society, which not all of them are bad. 
Some of them are overly protective. Some of them are just outright, you know, evil, but hey, we <laughs> that's the ones that our, our satanic uh, folks uh, like to, you know, hang out in. But there's a lot of mystery schools that... <laughs> hang out! <laughs> right, what, what, what else can I say? You know, I mean... I know, it's so beautiful. How you just that's the hangout. <laughs> right, we'll see. Clubhouse. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a clubhouse. It's an it's a nasty clubhouse, and you know where they do some really awful things in there. And I don't know what they do because I've never been in one. But from what I've read and what I've heard and what I've seen of you know whistleblowers and whatnot like that, it's not pretty. But they're the minority. They're the minority. If we can just keep that in mind that these guys are the minority. And the only power that they have is what we give to them. If we could remember to not give them our power, the whole thing would collapse. I mean, it's going to collapse anyway. It has to because of because of the Kali Yuga and where we are in the universe. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I hope that we make it a, a, a soft landing and not a big crash landing, which would really, really be hard on everybody. Yeah. And with few survivors, that would just be awful. So yeah. I'm thinking that, you know, if we want to have as many people survive as possible and prosper, we need to unlearn all the crap that we've learned from the day we were born. Because from the day we were born, we started learning the lies based on the different culture, based on the different uh, communities based on the different religions, whatever it is, they're all lies. Now, I'm sure that people will say, you know, that's blasphemous or <laughs> whatever it is like that. That's fine. You can go ahead and say it. I don't really care. No. Why should I care what, what other people think when they, they're living, they're living according to a lie. <laughs> so, uh, it, I wish I could, I wish I could pull out my brain and just hand it to somebody and say, here, you know, but that's not going to work because I'm not their savior and nobody else is their savior, but them. And the only way that they're going to have any success, anybody is to, you know, unlearn what you learned. Just realize that everything that you've learned is a lie. And then uh, it's some smart ass will come in. Well, two and two is four. Well, it you know you could dive into that real deep, and then maybe it's not dive real deep. <laughs> yeah. right. It's yeah, going to I some know. physics, going to some quantum physics, and you'll find mm -hmm. out that two and two is not always four. So, um, that's the smart Alec trying to give back, and that's that's fine. I don't you know I just I know that they're around. So hey, have a good time. I just this is an this is important stuff because it's like if nobody does anything, then we're going to have a hard crash and it's going to be really super hard on every single person, including the good guys. And uh, I I really want to try to avoid that if possible. I mean, there's going to be there's going to be um, a lot of death anyway. There's already a lot of death going on on the planet, unnecessary death. We just went through, you know, we just went through that whole uh, two, three years of, you know, people falling for the big lie. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you know, when you were talking about the energy and the, the sun and the, you know, hitting, you know, the earth and how it's hitting us all, is this what you, um, you connect to the collective awakening or? Yeah, the, I do. The, I do. Yeah. yeah, because you mentioned this um, several times on your website that it is the time for the collective awakening and the consciousness is shifting because you say it is happening. Now, I think that's why it's important to get your mind right, because if your mind is off, you're going to shift in alignment. I could be wrong, but I think this is why your work with regards to really pay attention to your thought patterns, knowing mm -hmm. that these thoughts may not be yours, you know, working on your mindset 
dealing with your mental health. Everyone is talking about mental health, mental health. Mm -hmm. But if these energies are hitting us, and I want you to really talk about this, just connect the dots for us. If these energies are hitting us, we're having the collective awakening, the consciousness is shifting, and then there are these negative thought forms. What are the repercussions if we don't get it together? Yeah, if we don't get it together, um, well, number one, we might not make it. Uh, number two, or the, or you might not make it. Um, and if you do, you're gonna you're gonna end up shifting your mind, kicking and screaming. So it won't be pretty, and it won't be fun, and it won't be comfortable. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but I'm suspecting that most of the people who refuse to um, look into their own thoughts and their own feelings objectively don't do it judgmentally because mm -hmm. everybody's made mistakes so if, you, if you've done some really bad things in your life well you know acknowledge that forgive it let it be in the past it's not going on anymore and if it is going on anymore then change it and stop doing it now, I know that that's easier said than done, but that's the that's the idea. Just stop whatever you're doing and do something different. I mean, I, right away, I'm thinking about like uh, somebody who's uh, uh, an alcoholic or a drug addict and they can't quit. They just can't quit. Well, they're going to have to get some help to, to quit. They're going to have to they're going to have to somehow figure out how to do that. If you're being addicted to the, the attacks by the entities, that's not easy to get rid of if, you're, if you've been used to listening to them for a bunch of years. Mm -hmm. I know that because that's what I went through. So it took me quite a while of being consistent. I was, I was so committed to getting rid of them and stubborn. You know, it's, I just got to the point of, you know, I don't, I don't really care what anybody else thinks if what I'm doing, I'll stop in the middle of the sentence and say, "Hey, wait a minute, let me do a redo." That was not I, that was not me. That was that was that's not coming from me. I'm sorry. So let me just rethink this and do this again. And thankfully, I had friends around who were like, "Okay, she's going through a hard time," <laughs> you know, and they knew my background, so they they were very forgiving, and so they 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 allowed me that latitude to like okay she's trying to work on herself so and isn't that amazing so, because not too many people do that out in the open <laughs> so, <laughs> i didn't right. care That's i just right. got to the point where i didn't care i was so desperate to get rid of this this thing that was destroying my life so maybe people have to get to that point i don't really know but i would, I would think there's an easier way to do it so is there an easier way when you're dealing with addictions and then you call it, you know, when these entities, I think, would, would you say that addictions, most of these addi addictions are entity driven? Well, that's what I've heard. Um, I've heard my partner talk about that. He talks about, he, uh, he had a patient who was an alcoholic mm -hmm. and he, and the patient told him, he said, you know, um, when I go into a bar, you could see all the entities in there. You could feel them, and uh, you know some people can actually see them. Oh yeah, not very many, but um, mm -hmm. but you can feel them. If there if there's a bunch of them, you can feel them. So like if you, this guy was in prison talking to my partner, and he was telling the story to my partner that okay, so when you walk into a bar, you'd see all these entities, all these. Uh, I forget what he called them, ghosts or something like that. And they wanted to get into you because they wanted to experience being drunk again. They were they were former alcoholics. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. That's totally amazing. So uh, I've, I've heard theories of people passing on. We, we don't die anyway, uh, our bodies give out and eventually die but our spirits never die mm -hmm. but i've heard stories about how somebody will die and then they don't know they're dead and they don't leave they don't go on to do their to where they're supposed to go mm -hmm. 
Well, when I heard this story from my partner, I thought, okay, so maybe there's some truth to that. I don't know. So I've heard a lot of stories like that. So I, I don't really know, but and I'm thinking that that's some of them. Some of these entities, those are the, those are the, they have a different kind of troublemaking that they do, like alcoholics and drug addicts and stuff like that. Uh, but these, these guys that are attacking the rest of us, um, they're just malicious. They want their food. They have to have the negative energy to, to survive. So it's like, if you can think of it that way, they, they're not from here. I, I don't, or maybe they are, but you know, I kind of have a hard time thinking they're from here, but maybe they are. Um, because I don't really know how they got here. I don't know where they're from, except that um, they're here and they're doing damage. So, and then I realized that the only way that they get any power over you is whatever you give them. If you give them fear or you give them anxiety or you give them stress of any kind, they'll feed off of it and they'll come back for more. So they feed off of fear and stress, and these are this is their food, mostly fear. Yeah, anything that's negative, uh, anything that is is negative, even <laughs> they'll even um, they'll even feed off of worry. They'll they'll jump into your memory. This is amazing to me that they can do this, but they they can get into your memory. And here you are, you're not thinking about anything at all. And all of a sudden, this really old memory pops into your mind and it starts bashing you in the head. And you're know, like, well, where did that come from? Just go away. Well, it isn't going to go away while you're fighting it. But it will go away when you say, oh, wait a minute, that's a lie. That's done. That's gone. That's for it. That's, that's already done. I, that's not going on anymore. And then when you realize who brought it up, well, there you are. There's your answer. So it, it's really helpful to know that these guys exist. It is really helpful to know this stuff, Sherry, because, you know, you know, we talk about the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. So we've tried the other way of dealing with this stuff. And, you know, here we are. People are talking about mental health more than ever. You know, it's going up, not down. So maybe it's time to look into a different angle, you know, a different perspective and really look at what, you know, what you're teaching here. You know what I mean? Because, you know, if you, the news is all negative, fear, fear, there's scarcity, this, and there's not going to be. <coughs> so now people are fearful, people are anxious, the economy, the inflation, people are not, you know what I mean? So when, when you mentioned these emotions, fear, worry, I'm just like, wow. So... <laughs> This yeah, they're having a banquet. They're like having a banquet on all of us. Yeah. It's a buffet now or what, you know? Yeah. It's, well, that's exactly. We're food for these guys. I know that sounds ridiculous to a regular person, but that's the truth. I know. That, believe me, when I first when I first realized it, it's like, okay, I can't go around talking about this stuff. People are going to think I'm nuts. Well, we are demystifying all things here. That's actually what our channel is all about. We demystify all things. So, you know, we are asking a whole lot of questions and we're getting mm -hmm. a whole lot of answers. Well, yeah. And, yeah. and there's a lot more people that are saying, you know, hey, hey, you know what? I tried that That's a Lie program and it really works. And um, I'm hearing that all over the place. I'm just amazed at how many people are using it. And I'm so grateful, so, so grateful that they're using it. <clears throat> I have had a, a person or two, not very many, but say, hey, you know what? I tried that dance and live program and it doesn't work. And then say, well, how long did you use it? I used it for a day. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's like, that's like taking, you know, the vitamins, you know, you're like, oh, that vitamin D doesn't work. And I'm like, <laughs> no, that just, that's a lifelong, <laughs> that's a lifelong, that's a lifelong thing. That's what the, that's a lie program it is. It's a lifelong thing. It's not a day. It's not an overnight success. It's a, depending on your situation. Some people have it worse than others. But if you just keep that in your thoughts as you're, as you're living your life and something comes into your head and you know that it's not yours, you just say, Hey, that's a lie. And then just carry on. Easy, you don't have to yell it. You don't have to have to, you know, don't get angry with it because that's what they want. You just say, Hey, you know what? I know that's a lie. 
And then I've taken it even a step further. I found out <laughs> that, you know, this is an energetic, ener energetic um, existence that we live in. Mm. The universe, the planets, our bodies, the, the, the earth, everything is energy. So love is energy. Fear is energy. Um, uh, anxiety is energy. All that, all those emotions are energy. So cosmic love is the most powerful energy that mm. exists. That's what we were made of. We were made of cosmic love. That's who we are. Mm. We should remember that. But we don't because we forgot. And that's by design for whatever reason. But I found out that if you send cosmic love to these entities, they run away. How do you do that? I just say, I send you love. I, say, I send you love. It's very simple. Wow. So I say, that's a lie. And I send you love. And then that's done. All done. You do it enough and they will not come back. They'll keep coming back for a while. Might be a year or two. They might sneak up on you when you're not thinking about it. But by then you're already uh, you're already um, familiar with with how that feels and how that sounds. You know, so you can just if you're in a crowd, you can just kind of excuse yourself and go walk away. And you know, like you have to go to the bathroom or something. I've done this lots of times at work. Excuse me, I have to use the bathroom. I go in the bathroom. I say that's a lie. I send you love. And that was it. Wow. Imagine if everybody, in, you know, in the in the workplace, in the schools, in the hospitals, imagine if everybody was doing this. Oh, that'd be Everything so would yeah. just change because you know, a lot of the in, you know, the fighting, the bickering, the jealousy, the envy, all this is not even like you're saying, it's not even people's thoughts. <laughs> you know, you can't be jealous of someone's life and you don't know their life. You know, you don't know them <laughs> their home. So, you know, there's a lot of things that imagine if everybody did what you're teaching today. Right. And how simple is it? I mean, it's really, really simple. So that doesn't mean that you don't have to get into yourself to remember who you are, because none of us, none of us remember who we are. I mean, I have a glimpse of who I am yeah. and but I don't remember how we used to do things, we would heal with love. We would, uh, we would, we didn't have this technology here. In fact, the, uh, the Essenes uh, ancient scripture talked about how all of the technology we see out here is a, is a replication uh, to remind us of the technology we have in here the brain you mentioned the computer is a mirror of the brain right? well and it's a really really powerful computer mm -hmm. and so it, but but we we and it, it functions beautifully but we gather our mm -hmm. our technology from the universe the cosmic universe and we don't understand that so if we could get, and I'm, I'm sure, well, there's there's a couple of scientists who are beginning to understand it. Uh, Nissan Haramine is one of them. Nissan Haramin. Mm -hmm. You've heard of him? No, but I'm just, I, I was just repeating it out loud so that, I, you know, we, we can look into that. Yeah, he's an amazing scientist. And mm -hmm. so <laughs> when, of course, being an engineer, having an engineering background, I'm, I'm drawn to science. I'm drawn to um, brilliant scientists, just like you're drawn to brilliant women. So, you know, it's like the same kind of energy going on there. So uh, if, uh, if somebody wants to look into Nissan here, I mean, uh, he's, he's worth your time mm -hmm. in my, in my opinion. <laughs> so he comes up with uh, that. He's, he's looking into the consciousness as it relates to our physicality and because he's putting consciousness into all of his equations. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, which uh, um, what has never been done before. Mm -hmm. 
And he's coming out with some amazing results. For example, here's one that'll blow your mind away. Every cell that we have in our body, mm -hmm. you can look at each each cell. You can you can look look at it down to the subatomic level, to where there's nothing there. Oh, nothing. Nothing there. Not that you can see. It's nothing there. It's energy, and within that, there's enough energy in there to um be the equivalent of a black hole that's how much energy we have in each one of our trillions however many trillion cells we have in our body that's in one cell that's in one cell so that's a mind blower i mean can, because we can't fathom that we can't fathom that much energy <laughs> Well, neither can a lot of scientists either. And they hear this, and he did a paper on it, and he did a presentation on it, and he proved it. He proved it scientifically. It took him, uh, I think, 20 years to do this. And I've been following him ever since he, before he, before he ever got, you know, no, well known. He was living in a in a van. He was traveling around the country, and he was, you know, thinking and thinking out loud and mm -hmm. telling people who were listening you know, what he was thinking about. Yeah, and that. some of his ideas were so profound. Mm -hmm. He's um, he's a, what do they call it? Um, someone who's, uh, uh, he's like, he's like an avant, uh, uh, um, what's the name of somebody who has, who's like a, uh, who has like, not autism, but they're brilliant in, in a particular area um, um, and not in other areas. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. But I want to say, Avon. Yeah, uh, people have that still. They're, yeah, there's there's people who. In one area. Right, right. Like so that's or, that's yeah. Nissan Haramine. He is. Yeah. Particularly, he's he's not stupid in other ways, but he's he's very smart in other ways too. But he's particularly uh, brilliant when it comes to um, physics and uh, consciousness and the big picture items. So that's what makes mm -hmm. him so fascinating. And uh, and so he, uh, I really enjoyed listening to what he was thinking at the time as he was traveling around, coming up with. Okay, I was, I was, he told the story of, he was on a bus mm -hmm. uh, going to school, going to grade school, mm -hmm. and uh, he was all excited about going to school, and uh, he got into class, and the teacher was saying, was explaining dimensions. He, the teacher said, okay, here's, here's, here's two dimensions, and then, uh, and then you add this line, and that makes it three dimensions, and then, um, and then you, uh, you do this and that, and, and and maybe you'll get a fourth dimension. And and Nissan was like, well, okay, well, there's what? So where's the dot? Because the teacher had drawn a dot. Okay, here's the dot. Draw a line, and and then he and that's that's two dimensions. And yeah. then and then you do and you make a square, and now you got three dimension. Mm -hmm. So Nissan was like, okay, so what's the dot? And the teacher's like, what are you talking about? What's the dot? <laughs> well, that's what his whole his whole premise was. The dot is all dimensions. It's round. It has depth. It has it has the two dimensions in there too. So in his mind, because that's how he was seeing it, he took off on that. Well, that led him to where he is today because of that dot <laughs> led him to where he is today of discovering how much energy the body has within it. And you can measure this energy um, with, uh, you can just measure our aura on the outside, the energy outside of our bodies with, um, uh, forget the name of the, the meter that you get. Um, it's like an electric, uh, meter to measure electricity 
-hmm. So you can put it into your field and it'll, it'll have so many um, uh, nanowatts or not nanowatts. Uh, anyway. Is it biofeedback? Hmm? Is it the biofeedback? Well, no, not exactly, but I, it's it kind of like that. But this is like a little device that you can hold to your hold to your field and see if see what it's measuring. And I don't remember how it's measured, but it's it's a very tiny little um, quantity. But if you get inside and look at the the uh, the uh, subatomic particles and start measuring that, it's a teeny tiny amount because okay. <coughs> because we're looking at such a tiny little piece. But the energy that that thing that that little bitty amount um, exudes, if you multiply it out to uh, say a cubic foot it's a huge number it's a gargantuan number mm. so i mean that's wow. that and the power of that little black hole little bitty black hole mm -hmm. i know it's crazy uh, it's and, really wild yeah because this should be our biology in class you know i always feel so cheated when i think of what we learned in school Oh, you really should. Anything about you biology, should. you know, really, you know, the body, the anatomy, the brain, you know, this is what we should have been learning. Yeah, we our bodies are, are so beautifully designed and nobody, you know, uh, just recently people are starting to look into it. <coughs> but the guys who are telling us that, um, the guys that are telling us how to live and what to do and do this medicine and all that stuff, they don't know anything about our bodies and how, how they work. They have no idea. So they, they teach the wrong stuff in school, the ivory tower, which is what our book is about. And, uh, and then uh, people get, they graduate and they don't know anything about our bodies. So they have to learn all over again. We've got some, we've got some pretty brilliant people out here now that uh, have, uh, have learned about the body. They're still learning because there's so much to learn. But our bodies are really intelligent. It's they're designed to heal themselves of yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah, of everything, including broken bones and all that stuff. They, you know, if you you might have to set them so that they stay put while they're healing, but we don't do the healing. They the body does the healing. No medicine will do that healing of the bones. See? So, um, and there's a tribe in Africa. I remember many years I read this article. There was a tribe in Africa, and I don't remember the country, and I can't find the article anymore, which is a shame because it was a brilliant article where this tribe they could cut off a limb and regrow it because they just knew in the tribe that this is the this is the norm. They were programmed to know. You know how we know you you'll cut your finger and it will heal. Uh -huh. They knew that if you lose a limb, it will just grow back. <laughs> I've heard that. I've, I haven't seen that article, but I've heard. You can't find the article anywhere, and I don't know what it was titled, or, you know, I can't really, I don't know how to look for it. And when I look with different search words, I can't find it. But they mm. had pictures and everything. About 10 years ago, I read that article on the Scientific American. You know, they used to do a lot of, a lot of really cool research on there. Yeah, you might, uh, you might look up, um, regrowing limbs or you've probably already done that yeah but, but i heard a story just the other day about the if your finger is cut off mm -hmm. what makes that finger grow back and i thought okay so i've heard of people having their finger cut off and they take their finger that's the other piece and they take it to the hospital and then they graft it on and sometimes it'll take and sometimes it won't mm -hmm. But this individual was saying, um, you know, how does the finger just know how to grow back? So apparently we are like, um, we're designed to be able to do that. And so, well, for example, there's, you know, the phantom pain that a person who's been amputated 
uh, their leg or their arm or something like that's been amputated, they can still feel that arm even though it's not attached anymore. My aunt was like that. She had her leg amputated and she was sitting in the chair one day grimacing. And I said, what's wrong? She said, well, my leg is hurting. I said, the, the one, the, the, your good leg? No, no, my, my other leg that's not here. It's, it's called phantom pain. So it's like the brain keeps a, a memory of that leg and she feels it. Wow. So, that is yeah, and and that's a common thing in in uh, in in the medical community. So, if there's that, um, there's no reason to think that we can't regrow that limb. We just don't know how. Yeah, and also imagine if we we the academia, imagine if they humbled themselves and went to this village or community or tribe and said, hey, can you teach us this really good quality, how this, you know, medicine, you know, way of healing, and then brought it to everybody else, you know, and just taught everybody this, I think we need to outgrow this ownership of knowledge and you have to patent it and you have to sell it. And, you know, the money coming behind it, I think sometimes limits people sharing valuable knowledge because, you know, they, they probably got the, the secret, you know, cause that they did the article. So they probably learned something, but they didn't share it with the world. You know, well, you just hit the nail on the head where th there's money involved. They think about money first. Mm -hmm. And how they can patent it and own it and intellectual. Yeah, they're not thinking about the, the, the welfare of the individual. They're only thinking about their pocketbooks, which is part of the big problem that we're seeing on this planet. So people want, they want money and power. Those are the two main things that they want. Not, not everybody, but the ones who do want it that are causing all these problems on the planet. They want money and power. Well, you know, if we don't give it to them, they, they, how are they going to get it? See, we keep, we keep buying stuff for, for, from these corporations that are doing all this damage to us. What if we stopped buying from them and started buying from our local neighborhood and the person who's actually doing the work, right? Wouldn't that be a, a good idea? Well, yeah, I mean, think of it because uh, there's there's communities here in this country, in the United States, uh, who are doing that. But the corporations are so big, they're making it so it's almost impossible to do that because, you know, where do you find somebody that, uh, you know, makes shoes or where do you find someone that um, you can always find someone who's growing something for food. So that's that's a good thing. And in fact, a lot of people are starting to grow their own food, which is an even better thing. But, uh, um, you know, there's who, who makes cars, who makes vehicles, who, you know, the only the big corporations do this stuff. And of course, we don't do that here in the United States anymore. We shift it off to Japan or to um, China, which is was a real smart move, right? Um, we just took all of our talents and shipped them off overseas because we could we could use cheaper labor. So that started our whole downfall. That was way the heck back when they did the uh, was it Napa? What was that? Was it was it? Uh, uh, oh, I don't remember the name of it now. It's either Napa or Natha or Nata Nat. Uh, shoot. Oh no, I wouldn't know it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, when we started that here in this country, we shipped every, everybody who was in an industry. Mm -hmm. If they didn't want to move over to to China, mm -hmm. to uh, because the company that owned that owned the the product was moving everything over there because of cheaper labor. <clears throat> so if they didn't want to move over there, then they were just out of work. We stopped manufacturing all kinds of things here. So that's, uh, that was the beginning of our downfall, as far as I can tell. The real beginning is it goes even earlier than that. It's like when they, when they uh, 
developed the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. That was in 1913, I think. Mm -hmm. That was when these bankers got together and thought it was a great idea to, you know, to um, own all the banks, <laughs> run all the banks. Never mind independent banks. They didn't want that. So they thought that was a good idea. And um, Congress and everybody went along with it. It's like, what? You know, and then they didn't tell anybody. Uh, they didn't tell the public what they were doing. They just thought it was, uh, they were just doing this to, um, to help with the depression. But it caused the depression. <laughs> You know, so and you see this knowledge you're sharing, it comes you you see uh, people in your, you know, you know, elderly seasoned people, oh, right? They yeah. have lived through these times, they know this time. Someone who was born yesterday or five, ten years, six, you know, fifteen, even twenty years ago, they don't know this, they don't have the history, you see. And that's why the I don't want to say the elderly, but it's very important to sit down with your elders and also learn from them because they have a lot of knowledge that you don't have, you know, and they have the real story because they lived it. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to learn about um, history or the wars or anything, you talk to your elders, you'll hear a completely different story, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I used to talk to my grandmother all the time. I said, what was it like during the Depression? How did you get by? How did you survive? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it was no big deal. We just planted our own food in the garden like we always did. We didn't have that problem like mm -hmm. the people in town did. The people in town were jumping out the windows because all their money was gone. So I said, okay, okay. They so tell you some very interesting stuff and they show you pictures. So, you know, it's it, they have the proof. You know, you say, show me the receipts. <laughs> they show you their pictures. And they tell you the story, you know, here when, when uh, you know, I've, we've read so many things about World War One, Two, and all this, but when you talk to the elderly uh, people here in Europe, completely different story. Oh, sure. With pictures, you know, and I'm always so shocked. I'm like, what in the world? You know, that's why I tell you, I feel so cheated <laughs> with my education. <laughs> well, here's the thing, they're, they, they're trying to change our history they don't want us to know our history. That's one thing. And they don't want us to know um, the history before that because we might really wise up and remember who we are. And the elders so, have the keys. Yeah, well, see, most of our elders didn't know that history either. That's true. Some don't know, yeah. But, but yeah, they, they didn't. Tell you how they were living, just, just conversation. Just in their time. <laughs> they tell you that but as far as the 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 older history that we're just now finding out today they didn't know that no because we're finding out stuff today you know as the earth is changing the planet is changing so things are are showing themselves that we that weren't shown before and there's these these johnny on the spot people that are out there like you know they're they're the ones that are finding this stuff and they <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna use that in future, just so you know, Johnny. That's that's fine. it's an old saying. It's my my era I'm saying. I'm gonna hide it. I'm hiding for the first time here. It's funny. Okay. Like <laughs> yeah. So there, there's these there's these Johnny on the spot people who are interested in in history, mm -hmm. and they will jump on it and go research it and then report back. This is the beautiful thing of. One size doesn't fit all. Everybody is unique. Each person yeah. has something to contribute to the collective. But we're not going to be, but we don't work as a collective. We, you know, the whole um, uh, J, uh, G. Edward Griffin, who's uh, a really well-known researcher, he's, he's kind of my age. Well, he's older than I am, actually. Mm -hmm. I think he's in his 90s. Um, he wrote a book called um, the um, Jekyll Island. I don't remember if it was the Secrets of Jekyll Island or anyway. It's a, it's a really good book about about the Federal Reserve, which is neither federal or a reserve. 
They just used to play on it. <laughs> it's neither federal nor reserve. That's true, but they call it the Federal Reserve to give the people idea oh that it God. is a federal reserve. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we'll trust it, right? Mm -hmm. So he wrote a book on that that opened up a whole bunch of people's eyes. Mm -hmm. But it was a long time ago, so now people don't remember. Oh, wow. So here he is in his 90s. He started this uh, this organization called uh, the Red Pill um, something where he puts on a, a conference every year and then all these people come to the conference and explain what they've learned and show their progress and all this stuff, which is education, the, uh, you know, number one education. Nothing like the schools teach. So if you if a person wants to find out, learn something, they they need to go to the red pill. Um, I don't remember the next the next word, but mm -hmm. you can look up G. Edward Griffin red pill, and you'll you'll get okay. his uh, his uh, thing. And I think that's so, how learning should be, you know. And and Sherry, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I think this was fantastic, and um, I just love your perspective and your take on learning and unlearning and i think we ended it really well we end it on a good note because this is an example of somebody who's not i'm just in my ego i had all the knowledge i taught it you know i am the you know he wants people to add on to discover new things build on it you know tear it yeah. apart put it together i think this for me is really this is valuable learning you know making everyone use their critical thinking skills, you know? So I, I, I like that approach to learning, you know? I think it's valuable. Okay. Like to, go ahead. Okay. Well, I was just gonna say, that's really an, an important point. Hmm. We're supposed to be passing our knowledge on. Mm -hmm. to, we're giving it away. We're supposed to be giving it to, to all the next generations. And that's how, that's how we grow. Hmm. That's how we learn more. That's how we expand our knowledge. And uh, right now we're in a particular time where they would just as soon suppress all that than to have shows like this come on to kind of waken people up like, oh, you mean there's more? You know, I, there's more to learn? We mean we don't know everything? Of course we don't know everything. We never will know everything. Never. We never do know the whole story. So we have to keep, we have to realize that that's not, see, science is, is saying, Oh, well, it's a done deal. There's no more to learn. We're all done. No. They've said that two or three times throughout the years, and they're still not done. They won't ever be done. Never. So Never. They can't, you can't go by, you know, trust the science. That's not true. That's another lie. So remember that. Yeah. And, you know, if you just think about the cell, that little one cell, how massive that is, and we've mm -hmm. not even touched the other trillions, quadrillions, and I don't know, I'm sure there's no number of cells that I can quantify. So that is big, you know, the knowledge I think we have is is, is immense. I'm still on that cell. <laughs> yeah, well, stick with that cell because that that is most powerful stuff. So yeah. when you can realize, okay, we've got this little cell, this teeny tiny, and then look at all the power it's got. And that's inside of us. Mm. And we have trillions of those things inside of us. Mm -hmm. What kind of power do we really have? Yeah. And how do we how do we access it and how do we use it? Well, we can do energy healing. A lot of people can. Mm -hmm. Energy healing is becoming more popular. Yay. Yeah. Because energy healing will take care of things that uh, medical... Uh, prescriptions cannot do. They just hide the symptoms, but the energy healing will actually heal. So, you know, people can look into that. They can just look into all kinds of, there's a big, huge, unlimited um, opportunity here to learn, to learn more. And the more we learn, mm -hmm. uh, and the more we realize how much we've been lied to all of our lives, 
the freer we'll be. Fantastic. And I think we should end it there. So Sherry, uh, thank you so much for coming. To all our listeners, I want to remind you all that all of Sherry's information is in the description section of this video. So make sure to stop by, have a look, their resources, their links, look at the It's Alive program. It's very simple. She's also told you how to use it. It is so simple, people. She's given you tools that you can apply today. You know, it's practical, it's easy, it's effortless, and you know, you know, be the judge. Try it out and be the judge. Um, Sherry, please have the last word and uh, share anything that you'd like to share that we might have left out before we head out. Oh, thank sure. You. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my website is keyholejourney.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll just have to kind of browse around in it. It's not set up like any regular website um, mm -hmm. because I have so many topics that I cover. <laughs> There's even a movie section for those that like movies. And, um, and they're, they're educational as well. They're not a couple of documentaries, but you know, they're, they're pretty good movies. There's a, uh, there's a lot on herbs. There's a lot of, on, on, uh, on essential oils. There's uh, a lot on um, the, that's a lie program. There's, there's just a whole jumble of things on there. So I couldn't just do a menu. So I did a whole page of topics. So if you find a topic that's interesting to you, then you can just go there and let that lead you wherever it leads you. And you never know. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of our listeners. We appreciate you. Thank you for your support. And as always, your feedback is welcome. Thank you. And goodbye. Thank you, Faith. You're welcome.